Test one, two, test one, two.
Good morning and welcome to New Revelation, located at 2130 West 21st Avenue, Gary, Indiana, where our pastor is Reverend Edward C. Turner. We welcome you to our worship service via Facebook or YouTube Live. We ask that you would comment, share, love, and we thank you for choosing New Revelation for your worship needs. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and exhort him with music and song. We will now have our deacons and our praise team. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Please turn your attention to Psalms 113, 113. Psalms 113. Praise ye the Lord. Yeah. Praise ye, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens, who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwells on high, who humbleth himself to be the things that are in heaven and in earth. He praises up the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him before princes, even with the princes of his people. He hath make, maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be look, joyful mother and children. Praise ye the Lord. I have read the 113 Psalms. May the Lord have the blessings to the readers and the hearers of his word. You can sit down if you like, precious saints. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray this devotional prayer that wondrous minds draw in, that we can be focused and in this service give you glory, honor, and praise. Praise through the choir, musicians, the spoken word. We give you glory and honor. We pray for those who are on their way to this service. Pray for those who are here, that if they came with yokes, that the chains can fall off. Whatever, that by the time the service is over, they can leave different than they came. We pray this prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, people of God. Isn't God amazing? Isn't God amazing? Isn't he awesome? Come on, if you could just stand on your feet if you feel like it. But come on and just begin to celebrate the Father in this place. Tell him how good he is. How wonderful he is. Come on, come into the place of God singing great songs. Come on, if you haven't taken the time this week, come on and begin to sing a song unto the Lord. He is worthy. Yes, he is. Come on. Come on, open up your mouth and give him glory. We give you glory because he is good. Come on, you can sing it with me. It just says, you are good. Hallelujah. You are good. Come on, help me say it like a big cry. Say, you are good. That chant, that anthem. Somebody say, "Be you are, you are good, Hallelujah." Be you are good. It's so simple. 
powerful. Come on, even though things are happening, you are. You are all good. Hallelujah. You are good. I said it again. Say you are. You are good. Say hallelujah. Come on, say. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 Say hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. You are good. Well, come on, open up your mouth right there and tell him how good he is. Come on, bless his name. You have been so good. You have been so good. My God is so good. You are so good. You have been so good. You are so good. You have been so good. Somebody just say so good. So good. You have been so good. My God is so good. You have been so good. Somebody say so good. You have been so good to me. You supply all of my needs. You have been so good, so good. You have been so good, so good. You have been so good. You are so good, so good. So you are you. Say hallelujah. You are good. Come on, without the music, come on. Say, raise it up. Say, hallelujah. You are good. Come on. Say, you are, you are good. Hallelujah. You are good. Come on, clap your hands right there. Come on. He's an awesome guy. He's an awesome guy. He's an awesome guy. He reigns. He reigns. Come on, he's an awesome guy. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome guy. Our God is an awesome God. Come on, you don't gotta get tired. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. We will from power and love. Our God is an awesome God. It just says, Our God. Um, and 
God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. He's always with you. If you've been looking for him, he has never left you. He's never left your side. Oh God, he's always with you. I am with you, my son and daughter. I never left you. If you seek me, you will find me, says the Lord. If you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me, you will find me. Yeah. If you seek me, you will find me. Our God is an awesome God. Be still and know that I am God. So that gotta be, be still and know that I am God. I am your God. Of your forefathers, I am your God. Today, yesterday, and forevermore. Be still, be still, be still, and know that I am God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wits, storm, power, and love. Clap your hands for the Lord. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and praise God in this house. I know you didn't come out here in the cold, amen, just to look at entertainment, amen. I know you came, amen, to praise God, amen, for he is worthy of the praise. There is nobody like him. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul, amen, make a boast in the Lord. Ah, oh, the humble shall hear. They shall hear the Lord and make a boast, amen. Come and magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Amen. Lord, we just come to you, oh God, this morning, oh God, thanking you and praising you, oh God, for your goodness. God, there is nobody like you, oh God. God, you sit high and God, you look low, but yet your arms are not too short that you cannot save, heal, or deliver. But Father, you able to do anything but fail. God, and I thank you today that I know you, God, for myself, uh, that I can go to the rock, oh God. Huh? And God, I know these here, God, hallelujah, know you, oh God. Huh? I don't believe they came here for shape, form, or fashion. Huh? But God, they came looking to you, oh God. Huh? Now, Father, I pray that you bless them right now, God. Huh? In the name of Jesus, God. Huh? Touch them one by one, God. Huh? You know every number of hairs on their head. Huh? I'm asking you to do whatever it is they, you have to do for them, God. Huh? God, that they will know that it is you, God. Huh? In the name of Jesus, God. Father, I ask right now, God. Huh? That, Lord, you look upon those that are looking and watching us on Facebook and YouTube, God. Uh, I pray right now, God, that you will touch them right now, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, God. Uh, if someone don't know you, oh, God, uh, I pray that you save today, God. Uh, I pray, God, that you heal on today, God. Uh, I pray that you deliver today, oh, God, uh, and set free, oh, God, for your glory. Uh, God, I know you can and you will and you're able, God. Uh, now, Lord, Lord, bless those, oh God, in convalescent homes, oh God. God, bless the sick and shut in, oh God. Look upon, oh God, those that are incarcerated, God. Touch right now, God. Let them know that you're with them even now, oh God. Do a new thing in them, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Look upon those in the hospital rooms, oh God. Touch right now.
right now, oh God, God, you a healer, God. Let them know, God, there's a bomb in Gilead. And God, you able, God, to do anything but fail. And oh God, bless the message of the day. Bless our pastor, God, as he's bringing forth the message today, oh God. Touch him right now, oh God. Continue to crown his head with wisdom, oh God. Let him know, God, that you're with him, God. Do a new thing in him, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. And God, I give you the glory, oh God. I'll give you the praise, God. And I give you the honor, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen and amen. And while you do it, amen, come on and give God. Come on and praise God. Come on and praise God. Come on and praise God. It's too quiet up in here. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. You're not doing it for me, but you're doing it for him. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. Hallelujah. I got nothing to put you. I got no heaven. I got no hell. But give God glory. Give God praise. Open this house today. For he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised.
Blessing me. Turn around and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you're looking at me, you're looking at a blessing. Turn around and look at somebody else. Say, I want to let you know, when you're looking at me, you're looking at a miracle. Because after all I've been through, through. Guess what, y'all? I'm still standing. I made it. Say yes. So guess what? I got the testimony. The Lord is blessing me. Not yesterday. Not tomorrow. But right now. Slap somebody a high five. And say it right now. Right now. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. Yeah. 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 Say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Could somebody just take at least 25 more seconds? You at least got 10 other people in the house that can just take 25 seconds to think back over your life and think about where you've been and where you are right now. And after you think about it, then you ought to give God a praise. Because I shouldn't be here. I should have lost my mind. Be crazy, but right now the Lord has blessed me, and so I'm gonna bless him. I'm gonna give him a Shabbat. I'm gonna lift up Judah. Hey, 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 h
thank you. Is there anybody in the house that got to thank you in your spirit? Thank you for making a way. Thank you for being a healer, providing for me. Thank you. Thank you. Put your hands together and give God a praise. If you're blessed and you know it, clap your hands. Amen. I'm glad to be in worship one more time. For truly God is a God that is worthy to be praised. You know, the truth of the matter, really, if you really think about it, I'm not as old as some of you. Some of you may can't praise like me. Amen. But when you just look back over your life, just think about what could have happened that didn't happen. Sometimes you got to thank God for what did not happen because you put yourself in some predicaments. You connected to the wrong thing. I know it's been a long time ago. But is there anybody in the house that can thank God right now for what did not? Oh, hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. That's what the psalmist said in Psalm 103. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul. And look what he says next. The reason I'm going to bless him because I won't forget his benefits. The Lord has been a beneficiary. I've been his beneficiary of his blessings. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be in this house of worship one more time. Amen. I'm glad to see you all. Amen. I miss you all last week, but it's just so good to see y'all in the house on today. Those who decided to come out to the house of worship. Amen. As long as I got breath in my body. I don't care how cold it is, rainy it is. I'm going to make it out to the house. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So good to see you all. Here those who are worshiping with us by way of Facebook on today. God bless you who will view us later on on our YouTube channel. God bless you as well. Those who are watching us around this country and some even outside of this country. We're glad to have your virtual presence with us on today. Those who are sick and convalescing. We want you to know that we are praying with you. All those on our prayer list, Sister Kendrick, we know, want you to know we're praying with you. All those, brother and sister Broden, we haven't forgot about you. We love you. Amen. We thank God for Sister Terry out there in Homewood. God bless you. Amen. Brother and sister Charlie Washington. Amen. We love you. and We thank God for you. We thank God. So good to see all of you on our prayer list on today. There's a word I would like to share with you during this Thanksgiving season as I was in meditation is what to say thank God for all our preachers that are here God bless this give them a hand my preachers amen that assist and share thank God for Elder Mays on last week who stood in this space my friend and my brother amen the Lord Bless this house on last week. Amen. There's a passage of scripture of the King James Version of the Bible. Deacon Robinson, if you're watching, I'm using the King James Version today. 
Amen. I know you're in Alabama. Amen. But I'm using the King James Version on today. The 50th number of Psalm. It says like this, offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the most high and call upon him in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Amen. I want to share from this thought on today a thanksgiving offering. A thanksgiving offering. This is a season where most of us are accustomed to by now where we these United States call Thanksgiving. But as people who are really grateful, we understand, as that song said, every day is a day of Thanksgiving. We don't have to wait to this particular time and space to give thanks because most of us who grew up in the house with our grandparents or our parents, they taught us to turn thanks over our food. Amen. Every time we sit down, some of us forgot that we go to restaurants. Maybe we're embarrassed. Amen. So I said, some of us, not all of us, some of us forgot. Amen. That we give thanks to God for what he has done. When you wake up in the morning, you thank him for another day. When you go to bed at night, you thank him for keeping you through the day. But we know in these United States and across this world that Thanksgiving is traditionally a time when friend and family, they get together to share memories. Not only memories, but they get together to share meals. And I say meals because as I prepare to go down south to Alabama with my family, we don't just wait to Thanksgiving to eat. We start Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> then we finally get to Thursday. Then we eat Friday and wherever. Amen. You share meals. Amen. As you reflect on memories, and that denotes how thankful they are, how thankful we are to still be present and we have people to share it with. A lot of the thankfulness that we have seemingly is because we have people to share it with. Just think if you had no memories to share with people. Just think about if you had no meal to share with some of your family members. People who are of the same bloodline as you. Amen. People who come from the same stock. They can understand your ways. When I listen to my uncles and my aunties, even going down to Jacksonville, listening to my uncle, I, it reminds me and makes me more aware of where I got some of my traits from, why I do some of the things. I wish somebody understood. And so, therefore, we share with our children, our grandchildren. Some of us are the grandparents now. Some of us share with our nieces and our nephews. Amen. Thank God for good aunties and uncles. Amen. Somebody thank God for cousins. First, second, third. I don't know how far y'all go. Amen. But just thank God for cousins, people that you can share life with, share a meal with. It's a way to say, I'm thankful that I'm still alive and that I have something to share with someone else. You know, in some families, even when we're sharing meals, some people at that time of sharing meals, uh, I don't know if y'all are like this, but sometimes people are asked to bring a different dish. If you don't bring a dish, bring some pops, some cups, some plates, something, forks, napkins, amen. Long as you bring, and I ain't going to go what else that you can bring, but amen, that's, that's what y'all family, amen. Just as long as you bring something, amen. Because in bringing something, that dish or those cups or that plates, it, it, it suggests that I'm contributing to the occasion. 
I'm not just going to receive, but I'm going to give. And sometimes we have it mixed up. Thanksgiving is not all the time about what you can get. Sometimes it's about what you can give. Amen. It's about that I'm contributing to the occasion. And so therefore, but do you have some people, it may be one of two, you may not have anything in your uh, any of these people in your family, uh, we all are offering something because the offering is a sign of my thankfulness, showing, showing that I'm grateful. But there are some people who don't put no thought into what they bring. I wish I had some people. You're going to throw some stuff together. I know y'all don't do this and y'all nobody like this. Throw some stuff. What would you say? Sister? Throw that mess in the garbage. Right. Just bring it anything. Put no thought into it. Put no heart into it. Thinking that we ought to accept it just because you brought it. I wish somebody understood. Every year you're going to bring them same old red cups. You've been bringing them same red cups for 20 years. Hey, choose something else. I wish somebody understand. Choose some. You're going to buy that same old bulk cake. No thought. Y'all see, y'all know some people like this. There ought to come a time. It should have been even in the initial stages where you contributed because you wanted the people to be pleased with what you brought. Not just because saying I gave something. Amen, somebody. An offering is a sign of your thankfulness. Being a part of something. I remember uh, when my pastor, he sent me to school. And I remember one time I went into his office and I got my report card. I said, Pastor Evans, I cannot uh, pay you back. Amen. For what you have done. But I showed him my report card. I said, this is a sign that I'm thankful because of what I am producing, what I am doing with what you have helped me with. Watch this. An offering is a sign of thankfulness. All of us should be sincere in our giving. And this is the case you all hear in the text that we have today. It's a different type of psalm. Y'all got to stay with me. Amen. It's a different type of psalm because psalms is generally comprised of prayers, songs, after certain events that happen in Israel's life. It's Israel's hymn book, if you will. Just like y'all have those hymn books in the back of y'all chairs. Back of those pews is their hymn book is full of songs prayers and scripture but this one is different this is in the second book y'all don't mind me doing a little teaching psalms is divided into five divisions this is the second division of psalms and it's the 50th psalm psalms doesn't have chapters amen it's a song book and does not have chapters so please don't say the 50th chapter of psalms because if you're a new member of New Revelation, I want people to know y'all been taught. Amen. Somebody, Psalm doesn't have chapters. It's the 50th number of Psalm. But this Psalm is, is housed in the second division of the five divisions. It's a Psalm of Asaph. I think Reverend Mays talked about Asaph last week. Psalm 73. Amen. Y'all remember he said, my foot almost slipped. Asaph was some one of the chief musicians of David. Asaph, David had uh, three chief musicians, and Asaph was one of those musicians. This is the only psalm in this division that we read of Asaph. He had 11 others that were written, and you'll find them in the third book of Psalm. But y'all don't want to hear about that. I'm just trying to show y'all ASAP's credibility. ASAP was a con contributor to the work of Psalms. 
He was one of David's chief musicians. Amen. He was one of the directors of music, Brianna. Amen. He knew how to compose music. But this psalm is different. It wasn't a prayer. It wasn't a psalm and for singing. But it carries with it, Sister Mitchell, a prophetic message. Because what was happening was most of the times the Lord will send a prophet to the people with a message. But Asap, he wasn't a prophet. But he had a prophetic message. A prophet was one that was sent to the people from God with a message for them. Primarily in that time because they did not have the full revelation. And so God would reveal himself through the message that he gave the prophet to the people. Y'all roll it with me. But this was not a prophet. But God still used a chief musician to get a message to the people. And, and, and the message that carried this prophetic tone was God was addressing his covenant people. People that were in relationship with him. Y'all rolling with me? People who were in relationship with him. His chosen people. But at this time, Sister Wilson, God saying, I'm going to bring y'all into the courtroom. Because I have some charges against you. Amen, somebody. And there are times in our life where God has to bring all of us into his holy courtroom. Because there are some charges. We have been indicted with some things. I feel like preaching. Amen. He says, I, I, I'm bringing you into my courtroom because I'm going to pass judgment on you. And any time you go into a courtroom, they're always a judge. God was the judge because his covenant people were not acting out the relationship that they decided to be in with him. I wish I had somebody to understand. The specific charge, watch this, against them. Y'all roll with me because this is important. Was their outward acts of obedience did not match the sincerity of what they were offering. I wish somebody understand me. See, what was happening was they were giving God his own, offering sacrifices to God. They were approaching God. Let me just put it like this. They saying, in essence, we're going to give you, God, what you want from us because we know you need it. I wish y'all understand. This is, the, this is the tone of the text. Lord, since you asked it of me, I'm going to give it to you just because you asked because I know you need it. Just like those people that show up every year with those same old red cups. I know y'all want me to bring something, so I'm going to bring it. I wish y'all understand. Just because I was asked to bring something. But there was no sincerity in their offering, preach y'all. And so the Lord, common leader, was saying to them, I got to bring you into the courtroom because of your foolish philosophy. You think that I need your sacrifice? Oh, I wish somebody could help me through a long thing here. He said, don't you know that I own the cattle? I wish somebody understand that I don't need your sacrifice. Guess what? The reason I don't need it, because I'm the one that provides you with it. I wish somebody understand me. The Lord said, don't you come to me with that disrespectful mindset. Don't you come to me thinking that I need it and you're going to give it to me because I need it. And there are times when the Lord has to correct our foolish philosophy. I wish somebody understand. And the reason they thought this because back there in that time in the ancient Near East, watch this, the gods, you know, everybody have gods they worship. Sister Geraldine Wilson, the gods depended on the sacrifices of their people. 
But God, Yahweh was saying, I'm different. I wish somebody, I'm going to have it. Amen. He said, I'm not like Baal. I'm not like Asher. I'm not like any other God. He said, I'm the God that created the heavens and the earth. He said, I'm the God that put the moo in the cow. I'm the God that put the cluck in the chicken. I'm the God that put the roar in the tiger. He said, I did it. I wish somebody understand. He said, I'm not like every other God. They are dependent on you. But the last time I checked, you were dependent on me. You call me. I ain't mess with y'all. Y'all call me when y'all were in bondage. When y'all were down there in Israel, he said, I heard y'all cry. He said, I was minding my own business, but you called me. You needed me. I didn't need you. Now you're going to be act like you made it now? And you doing this? I wish somebody understood how disrespectful people could be. He said, I'm going to call heaven and earth as my witness preached her. Amen. He said, I don't need no other witnesses. He said, I'm going to call heaven and earth my creation to let you know that I don't need no human witness. I can call my creation as my witness. They know my covenant relationship with you. He said, and therefore, you're going to be disrespectful enough, insensitive enough, insincere and bring me something because you think I need it. And see, they thought that God did not need their sacrifices. They needed to know that God did not need their sacrifices, but he required them because of their covenant relationship. It was not based upon need. It was based upon the relationship that I established with you. Y'all rolling with me? Amen, somebody. They were acting as if they were upstanding members of the community. But what they were doing, they were stealing. They were lying on each other, slandering people's name. Amen, somebody. When they went into court, they were false witnesses. They ain't, that don't sound like none of us. I know that ain't none of us. But they were lying, stealing, slandering. But they were acting like they were upstanding citizens coming to church with their Sunday go to meeting clothes on. Showing up, giving their offering, paying their tithes on the deacon board, in the pulpit, working on the usher, but lying on folk. Slandering people's name. I wish somebody understood. Lying and doing the thing, breaking the ninth commandment. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his household. Lying, trying to be like everybody else. He said, then you're going to act like you all good. Just because you got a suit on. Just because you got a heel and some dresses on. He said, that don't make you who you are. He said, I got to show you who you are. Because you're not being the people that I entered into covenant relationship with. And because they figured God didn't care because they didn't suffer the consequences. Y'all rolling with me? I'm almost at the text. Amen. And so therefore, he speaks to them. Isn't it good, God? No, he always says, his words said, warning comes before destruction. God said, because you're not being the people, I'm not going to destroy you right away. He said, I'm going to give you a warning and I'm going to send, watch this, a, a source to you, watch this, that is not who you think. See, you're used to ASAP writing music, but I'm going to send him in the form of a prophet to give you a message in order to head you back in the right direction. That's why you got to be very careful. This is a word for somebody. You got to be careful who you dismiss. I said something right there. I know it's so simple. But some of us dismiss people. And you don't know what you can get or what God has for you through that person. I wish somebody understood. You got to be careful who you dismiss. Just because that he wasn't functioning in his regular, watch this, uh, 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 space, in his regular position, the Lord had a message for him. This is why this psalm, the 50th psalm, is different. But because we serve a gracious God, it wasn't a whole 
Israelite community, y'all. It was just some that were acting like that. Just like in any group of people, it's not everybody. But he's talking to those who were had fell below the mark who were missing the mark. That's why when we hear stuff preached or said, don't always take it personal. If you know you're guilty, just say, ouch. Amen. Somebody did, just get it together. He's only talking to the ones that it pertained to. It wasn't everybody, but, but God is gracious. Oh, Lord, God is so gracious. He said, I'm going to send you a warning before there is destruction. So he, we find ourselves here at verse number 14. And what he's telling them now, he's saying, is get yourself together. Get it right. You've had year after year, I've allowed you to waddle in the mud. I didn't say nothing because I thought you would get it together. I thought you would be reminded of the relationship that I have with you. And is there anybody in the house that ever got yourself together because you were reminded of the relationships? Okay, yeah, let me put it like this. I was talking to somebody about my life, and I said, there are some things I'm not going to do. I don't care how many lies are out there. I said, there are some things I'm not going to do because I represent more than myself. I wish somebody understand me. I know my mama gone, my big mama and them gone, my granddaddy and them gone, amen. But I believe that they're still watching me, amen. And I represent more than just Ed Turner, amen. I represent this. I carry a name, amen. I, and before I get to the name of Christ, amen, before I get there, because that is important, but I carry a name that's important to me. And there are some things I'm just not going to do because I believe my grandmama wouldn't like it. I believe my granddaddy, I wish I had some real folk in the house. I know y'all do the stuff y'all do because y'all think about the Lord and still jacked up. But there's some stuff I'm not going to do before I get to the Lord because I know my grandmama wouldn't approve of it. My granddaddy, my aunties wouldn't approve of it. They'd say, boy, what's wrong with you? Before I get there, there's some things I'm just not going to do. And when I think about who I am, and who I belong to, then there are just some things I'm not going to. He said, I thought y'all would get it together because y'all were in relationship with me, but y'all didn't have enough sense, so therefore, I'm going to be gracious. I'm going to send somebody to help put you back on the right track. He said, so this is what you're going to do because a Thanksgiving offering, number one, he says, offer unto the Lord. Y'all reading the text, amen. What does he say? He says right there in verse number 13, offer, sacrifice, a thanksgiving offering to God. Amen, somebody. He said a thanksgiving offering, first you must learn how to represent right. Amen, somebody. Because some of us don't represent the right way. Some of us don't give God what he deserves. Amen, somebody. Guess what? God don't make us do nothing. He don't make none of us do anything. It is a free will to do what we do. And if you're going to be connected to a holy and a righteous God, and you're going to have a Thanksgiving offering, you got to learn how to represent right. Don't just give God those same old red cups. I wish somebody understand. Don't just give God that same old half-hearted service. I wish somebody understand. Don't just do it just because you know it's right to do. Well, they need me down at that church, so I guess I should. We don't need you. Amen. Just mess around and die. Amen. The show is still going to, you got to represent right. You have to have the right motive for why you are doing what you are. I wish somebody understand. I don't care where you are, what you are doing. You got to represent. He says offer. And what he's saying is sacrifice. Amen. Sacrifice. What he's saying is you have to learn how to worship. Because if you're going to sacrifice, anytime you sacrifice, that's a sign of worship. 
That means you're falling under the authority. And because we're in relationship with God, we got to represent, right? I wish somebody understand. There are people on the team. I was listening to my barber yesterday. Talked to a young man. He was, I guess he was on a high school football team. He said, I told a coach that I didn't want to play today because it was cold outside. You're on the football team. You know you play outside in Northwest Indiana. It is going to get cold, but you don't want to play because it's cold outside. Come here, look closer. Just look around at the empty seats. Some people didn't show up today. See, y'all understand. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I didn't have this in my notes. Some people didn't show up today because it's cold outside. They don't want to play. Just like it rain outside, when it snow outside, some people don't want to represent right because of the conditions. But is there at least five people in the house? I ain't going to ask everybody. But no, it doesn't matter the conditions outside as long as I can represent right. Sacrifice sincerely. Amen, somebody. We got to learn how to perform, even when it's not pleasurable, even when conditions aren't favorable. Amen. He said, sacrifice, offer. Worship is your offering. Then he said, the next after your representation, you represent right. He said, then have regard. There should be respect in what you give. What you give ought to be respectable. It ought not to be, as I stated, half-hearted service. I'm not just going to give. He said, pay your vow to the Lord. What you do is not for the pastor, not for the deacon, it's not for anything. I learned a long time ago that if I preach for people, then I'm sure enough saying. I'm a sure enough be lost. But people didn't call me. Amen, somebody. The people did not wake me up this morning. People did not give me my health and my strength. So whatever I represent with is going to be respectable. And I don't know about you. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it said, present your bodies. A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I wish somebody in the house and said that whatever I do, I'm not going to do it because I'm entitled because I'm going to represent right and I'm going to do it with reverence and regard because it's unto the Lord. It's not unto people. And is there anybody in the house know however you serve, wherever you serve, even if it's on your job out there, it's I'm serving unto the Lord because people need to see the light of Jesus in me. I know I may get off task sometimes, but thank God for grace that I'm going to put myself back on track. I'm going to be reverent. I'm going to be respectable. I'm going to offer my life as a living sacrifice. Why? Because somebody needs to see Jesus through me, not just on Sunday morning, but on Monday morning, on Monday evening. Somebody needs to know Christ outside of these four walls. I live a reverend law. Represent, perform, regard, give something that's presentable. They knew when they offered a sacrifice, it couldn't be no one-eyed goat. Couldn't have fleas on it. It had to be a sacrifice without a spot or a wrinkle. I feel like preaching now. Jesus said, I gave you my best. He said, when I gave you my only begotten son, he was perfect in all of his ways. He said, the one that did not know sin became the sacrifice for me as a sinner. So why would I give God my, not my best, if he gave me his best? Now look at what he says. A thanksgiving offering. Number one requires us to do something. Watch this. It said you got to represent right. You got to perform. You got to regard, reverence, be presentable with it. And then look at what he says. But look at how gracious God is. He says right there, 
He said, and call on me in your day of trouble. Lord, have mercy. All of us that have lived in here, and young folk just like Big Mama keeps stay, used to say, just keep on living. If you ain't ran into no trouble yet, trouble is sure enough coming your way. There are times when people won't be able to help you. You can call mama, call daddy, call everybody. Call the welfare department, whoever you're going to call. Sometimes they can't give you the help. But is there anybody, I know everybody can't testify, but is there anybody in the house who will not know human system could help you? I called on the Lord. And somehow or another, the Lord intervened on my behalf. And that's why I can testify that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. The Lord is saying, I'm trying to get you in a better space in your life. Because trouble is going to come, but I need you to represent right. He said, I need you to do it with some reverence and some regard. He said, if you do that right, then watch this. You can make a request. It's not until you represent right and you do it with respect and reverence and regard for who I am that you can make your request. It baffles me that folk think that they ain't had no relationship. I wish I had somebody in the house with the Lord and we tell them to pray. We mess people up. People ain't got no relationship. They're not reverencing God. Then they find themselves in trouble and we mess people up. All you got to do is pray about it. I wish somebody in this house understand. We mess people up. Amen. Thinking all they got to do is pray. He says, no, you need to be in a relationship. He's talking to people who are in covenant relationship with him. Yes, God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. But there are some special blessings that God is going to give you because you're in relationship. I wish I had somebody understand. Anybody ain't had children in the house? You're not just going to go around blessing everybody's child. I wish somebody understood. But because they're your child. There are some special blessings in store for them. I wish somebody in the house. So the blessings ain't for everybody. Yes, the best special blessings that are reserved for the righteous. And is there anybody in the house that the Lord is saying is not about being ritualistic, but it's about being righteous. It's about being in relationship. Y'all didn't come for this. I'm just talking about a Thanksgiving offering, y'all. He said it's about those not who are ritualistic and too many of us just do stuff out of ritual but there's no righteousness attached to it he said I'll lead you in the path of I wish somebody understand righteousness he said but when you have the proper respect and you represent right then you can make a request you can pray Amen. That's why I didn't want to put everybody on blast. That's why I said just a few people in the house that ever really called on the Lord. Because you had the right relationship. And the Lord opened some doors for you that no other man could open. The Lord opened windows for you that nobody else. The Lord did it for you. Is there anybody in the house that learned how to pray because you were in the right relationship? All because I knew I would not be ashamed. Is there anybody in the house uh, that know I'm not ashamed to pray? Some of us are ashamed to pray because we don't pray that much. Uh, some of us only pray when we get in trouble. Some of us only praise God. Uh, come to church uh, when we get in trouble. Uh, but is there anybody in the house uh, that said in your heart, uh, it's not about what I do. Uh, it's about who I am. Uh, and because I know who I am, uh, I'm going to pray in the good times. Uh, I'm going to pray in the bad times. Uh, I'm going to pray when things are going right. I'm going to pray when things are going wrong. Is there anybody in the house that ever made a request to the Lord? He said, once you represent right, once you do it with the right respect, he said, then you can make a request. And then in the house, then look at what he says. I'm ready to run now, but I need to slow down. 
He said, and call on me in the day of trouble. He said, y'all remember, as I just highlighted, y'all were in Egypt. Y'all were faced with the Red Sea. And y'all called on me. I allowed you to walk over the Red Sea on dry land. He said, every time you called on me, I showed up for you. And is there anybody in the house that's glad that know that God will show up for you in the time of trouble? Y'all don't want to talk to me, but Psalms 46 said, God is my present help in the time of trouble. There were some things that I had to do myself, but there were other things that I could not do. But I'm so glad that the Lord, he showed up after I make my request. The Bible said that I will rescue you. How many of you know that the Lord will rescue you? Y'all don't want to talk to me. Come here, David, in the 40th Psalm. David said, I waited patiently on the Lord. I was in a horrible pit. I didn't know how long I was going to stay in that pit. But I waited. I expected God to show up. That's too fancy for y'all. But Grandmama said it like this. I called on the Lord, and he may not. Come when you want him, but he's always on time. And after a while, God showed up and lifted me out of that pit. Is there anybody in the house that's for real, for real? You've been in a horrible place in your life, and God lifted you up out of that pit. He put your feet on a solid foundation. He put a new song in in your mouth, God has been my protector, ain't he all right, I was in trouble, didn't know how I was going to get out, but I'm so glad that he's been my protector, ain't he all right, he will rescue me from the storms, from the snare of the foul, ain't God all right, say yeah, after you rescued her from the hand of the enemy, the last thing a Thanksgiving offering gives to us. Watch this, y'all. We got to give back to him. I told you in the beginning, Thanksgiving is not just about what you get, but it's also what you give. He said, after I gave you what you wanted, he said, now give me what I deserve. He said, once I rescue me, he said, you will glorify me. What that means, you need to learn how to rejoice. And is there anybody in the house that knows during this Thanksgiving season, I've received a Thanksgiving offering. I received his son named Jesus. He died on the cross for my sin and your sin. He rose from that tomb on the third day. Say yeah! He went back to glory. Yes, he did with all power in his hand. And he so therefore, when I think about the offering that I received, I'm going to give an offering. I'm going to rejoice. Is there anybody in the house that really have a reason to rejoice? Are you thankful for anything? The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy say yeah if you ain't got nothing else to be thankful for let me give you one reason that you need 
feet, uh, to rejoice. Uh, I was on my way uh, to a devil's hell, uh, but I'm so glad uh, I don't have to go to hell. Uh, I'm headed uh, in a new direction. Uh, say yeah. Uh, Oh, oh, yeah. Excuse me now. I don't need nobody to rejoice with me. Because when I think on the goodness of the Lord and what he's done for me, I got joy. Oh, joy in my heart. Say, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say yeah. A Thanksgiving offering. I've learned not to get excited. I've learned not to worry about those people who don't get excited. But it's just about my praise to the Lord. My praise is personal. If he never never pay another bill, if he don't heal my body, if he don't give me a car or a house, I got something that I'm excited about. I got joy. Oh, 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 A thanksgiving offering. Thank you, O oh God, for giving us a reason to be thankful. Father, some of us have been insincere and half-hearted in our worship, but you require more of us. You don't require insincere gifts and giftings. We pray, oh God, now, for those under the sound of my voice, that they will heed the word of the prophet. The prophetical message that you sent through the psalmist that we don't do anything half-hearted just because we think you need it or other people are counting on us only because only what we do for Christ will last we pray our motives are right we pray that we represent right we do it with the right regard reverence respect thank you oh God for allowing us to make requests to you when we are right thank you for being a righteous god thank you for rescuing us and father thank you for a spirit to rejoice to give your name praise during this thanksgiving season oh god help us to be reminded of all of the material blessings we have but not just the material blessings but all of the spiritual blessings that you have for us in heavenly places. And when this life is over, oh God, we can leave here thankful, rejoicing, because we know where we're going. Bless us now. If there's somebody who don't have a relationship with you, oh God, we pray that they desire a relationship with you. If somebody needs to recommit themselves to you, oh God. Somebody has been faltering outside of the ark of safety. We pray for them right now, God. Too many people have been doing things religiously, 
but with no real righteousness, no real sincerity. Bless right now. There's somebody who's listening to us. Let them contact our church. We pray that their spirit is led to contact us. Those who are sick, we pray for them. Touch right now, all over this land and this country, that people will come into the knowledge of you. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank those who tuned in with us on today. We pray something was said to challenge you during this Thanksgiving season. We pray that you are not just the recipient, but you are the contributor. Not in your, not just in your families, but to God, the one who made Thanksgiving possible. God bless you, those who are sick. We want you to know that we're praying for you, those who will be traveling. God's grace as you travel over the airways, highway, air, highways, and railways. We pray, Father, for this will be a happy and safe season. And remember, we will not have our weekday services, but we pray that you will come to our Thanksgiving services where we serve some of the entities that we partner with on Thursday at 830 to see your face in this place. And remember, this week, don't let the day make the difference in you, but you make the difference in the day. Let's put our hands together. Let's stand if there's somebody in this house. Felicia McGee. Helen Pettis Means. Damian Lee. Quantulet Normant. Tiara Hicks. John Holloway. Aaron Pratt. Lynn. This is your NRNBC News team. Good afternoon. I'm your news anchor, Tiara Hicks, and here is the NRNBC News for the week. Attention all youth, parents, and or guardians. The New Revelation Missionary Baptist Church Learning Center is accepting applications for any interested youth from first grade up through 12th grade that are in need of tutoring or college preparatory skills and studying techniques. There will be sign-up sheets in the vestibule for anyone that is interested. If you have any further questions, please see either Sister Antoinette Cardenas, Brother John Halloway, Sister Connie Wilson, or Deacon Eric Hairston. Please keep in mind that both Bible study on Tuesday and Wednesday night are canceled as well as teachers meeting. Again, Bible study this week is canceled. We will reconvene after Thanksgiving. The missions department will be hosting a special breakfast on Thanksgiving morning at 8.30 a.m. and the entire church is invited. Yes, you are invited. Our special guests will be the Serenity House, Brothers Keepers, and Veterans Changing Services. Please come out and fellowship with our special guests and one another. Please remember to add your name to the sign-up sheet in the vestibule if you plan to attend the 90th birthday celebration of Sister Antoinette Hairston on Saturday, November 26th from 3.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. here at the church. The entire New Revelation Church family is invited. Let's continue to pray and offer our support for the sick and shut-in and their caregivers, the youth, and those that are in prison. Well, it looks like this concludes the NRNBC News for the week, but please stay tuned for a special presentation from a member of the professional health care ministry. If you are watching and would like to contact or visit New Revelation, we are located at 3140 West 21st Avenue, in Gary, Indiana. The phone number is 219-949-2225. We would love to have you join us for any of our Sunday services. Our Sunday Bible Institute starts at 9.30 a.m. and Sunday morning worship at 11 a.m. 
May you all have a wonderful and safe Thanksgiving holiday. And remember, don't let the day make the difference in you, but you make the difference in the day. Take care and see you next time.